this is a very unusual virus. Everything we look at with this virus seems to be a bit scarier than we initially thought. The Zika virus is spreading through Florida. The White House and both of our senators say we need more help, but Congress is blocking the emergency plan. I don't think their constituents are going to find it an acceptable response when there is a widespread media freakout about the Zika virus. We'll bring in Senator Bill Nelson from Washington, and we'll dig into the race to replace Marco Rubio. We'll put candidate and Lieutenant Governor Carlos Lopez Quintero to the test. And we'll show you why the Cruz Kasich Alliance may backfire. And in our humor segment, Marissa Lynn kicks off the first Money, Power and Politics football draft. This is Money, Power and Politics. Okay, we begin tonight with exclusive footage of Ted Cruz and John Kasich the moment they decided to join forces. I'm sick and tired of losing the primaries. Okay, Lloyd. After repeatedly striking out on their own, they found each other. You better not be fooled. <laughs> and it dawned on them they could be even smarter by sharing one brain between them. <laughs> Now, all they have to do is convince people who want Kasich in one state to vote Cruz and people who want Cruz in another state to vote Kasich, depending on where they live. What could go wrong? John Kasich has decided to pull out of Indiana. So who should your supporters vote for in Indiana? Well, they, I, I've never told them not to vote for me. They ought to vote for me. Yeah, so Kasich undercut their tag team on the same day they formed it. Now all they have to do is stick to their agreement to pull out of certain states while still asking voters in those same certain states to vote for them thereby continuing to divide the vote that they agreed to concede to each other. Makes you wonder how Trump ever got the best of them in the first place. Hi there. Now, before I likened Cruz and Kasich to Dumb and Dumber, I thought about comparing them to the odd couple because Cruz could play Felix. Okay, who wants to say Grace? I do. Okay, good. And Kasich is Oscar all the way. Can we ask you questions before you got through your mouth? No more class than that, that's for sure. How's that sandwich? In fact, Trump has already picked up on that. He has a news conference all the time when he's eating. I have never seen a human being eat in such a disgusting fashion. Okay, let me belly up to the bar here. Boy, this is good. All I wanted to do was come and have a fish sandwich, bro. <laughs> Mm -hmm. At the very least, Kasich and Cruz just don't seem to fit together. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it. Imagine a Denny's combined with a Benihana's. Yeah, that's it. But it goes beyond just being a political odd couple because when they strike a deal, immediately after appear to undermine it, and by deal we mean publicly conspire to manipulate results from state to state, while the front runner is taking off on the claim that the system is rigged. <laughs> that does sound like something Harry and Lloyd would do if they got into politics. Oh, look, Frost. And of course, Trump is using it as a poison pill against him. It's called collusion, folks. Is this collusion? Is it collusion? No, collu what does that even mean? I don't even know. Does he know what that means? Well, it means adversaries conspiring, usually in secret, for personal gain. How do you respond to that attack? I don't respond to Donald Trump. I mean, what are you kidding me? But by joining forces and doing it in public, they are clearly responding to Trump. And it may backfire because it's feeding Trump's narrative that others are manipulating the system and that he's winning and that they're desperate. And at this point, their chances really could be more like one in a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we've also compared the race to Game of Thrones. And to that end, I reached out to Hugh Parkinson, who came up with something that we can show you tonight. Friend, we have traveled very far. We have no food, no water. Once I see my people fed, I would be honored. No, we have a serious problem. We can't be the stupid country anymore. Given the circumstances, my lord, I believe extreme measures are warranted. The people that are with me 100% are the people. What? Yeah, all right. Thanks and courtesy Hugh Parkinson, Insiders ABC. Check out our Facebook page, by the way. Search for Fox 13's Craig Patrick, like our page, and you'll find a link to more of Parkinson's work, and you can catch up on prior shows and segments here that you may have missed. Coming up, Florida senators join forces to fight Zika, but Congress will not go along with the plan. 
We'll show you why we have a health crisis and a standoff in Congress. Senator Bill Nelson will join us from Washington. We have a health crisis. Mosquitoes are spreading the Zika virus that causes irreversible birth defects, and it's already spread into Florida. But Congress has not approved the president's call for another $1.9 billion to fight it. When there is a widespread media freakout about the Zika virus that Republicans haven't acted because they didn't get their questions answered. Republican leaders are skeptical because they say they want more specifics before they approve the extra money to make sure that it does not go to waste. We're going to do everything uh, that's necessary in a responsible way to deal with this uh, threat. In Florida, Republican Senator Marco Rubio and Democratic Senator Bill Nelson are both pressing for the money. Florida is expected to be among the hardest hit by the virus as summer and mosquito season sets in. All right, Senator Bill Nelson, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure, Craig. If we commit an extra $1.9 billion to fighting Zika, where specifically and how would that money be spent? There are a lot of things you got to do. You got to go after the mosquito population. You got to warn the people. You got to educate the people. You got to take care of the medical needs of the people that, in fact, are actually infected. It is estimated that 20% of Puerto Rican's population is going to be infected. Let's move on to Saudi Arabia. Should families of September 11th victims have the right to sue the government of Saudi Arabia if evidence shows that that government played a role in supporting the terrorist attacks? Well, I think what you're asking is, what about the missing 28 pages of the 9-11 investigation? And media reports have said that there is a connection between the Saudi government and the 9-11 hijackers. But that, in intelligence reports, has been debunked. You have previously said that it's a two-faced game with Saudi Arabia. Why would Saudi Arabia play both sides as our ally and then supporting our enemy behind the scenes? Well, so many of our friends in that part of the world are duplicitous. They say one thing in private and say another thing in public. Uh, and that's to cover their own posteriors because of whatever their politics is or that part of the world in which they live. But that has nothing to do with this intelligence report that I think ought to be made public. Senator Nelson, thank you for your time. Okay, Craig, thanks. Coming up, Florida's U.S. Senate race in depth. Our Lieutenant Governor Carlos Lopez Quintero has racked up big endorsements from the Republican establishment. We'll sit down with him and put him to the test in tonight's Spotlight. Governor Scott may regret saying that. Lieutenant Governor Jennifer Carroll did some work for a company accused of illegal gambling, and so she bailed on him or he bailed on her, depending on who you believe. So after leaving the position vacant for months, Scott tapped state lawmaker Carlos Lopez Quintera to replace Carroll. And he served Scott on the campaign trail by hammering Charlie Crist. When it was Carlos. time to stand up and make a difference, Carlos, he left. Good to see you. Hey, how are you? Doing well. Now our lieutenant governor is running for U.S. Senate. His family fled from Cuba after Castro took over. He strongly opposes White House policy on Cuba and embraces Governor Scott's agenda. Well, lieutenant Governor, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Craig. It's good to be here. Let's start big picture. Get a sense of where you line up. Who did you vote for in the presidential preference primary? Well, I was supporting Marco Rubio. And give him a score of 1 to 10 in terms of how he's performed in the U.S. Senate. 10. You've served as lieutenant governor for a while. Florida went without one for about 10 months. Knowing what you know in the job, is that an essential job that Florida needs or could the state get by okay and save $124,000 a year without one? Well, it's, it's in the state constitution. Uh, previous lieutenant governors uh, or any uh, other per person in this office could use the office to grow their profile and use it for political reasons. I've actually cut the budget of the office by more than half, reduced the staff because 
I recognize that taxpayer money, somebody has to pay those taxes for it. Would you support wiping out the position entirely? I think that's up to the voters. They're the ones that created it. They'd have to be the ones to decide. If whether this or not came up on the ballot and you had a vote, which way would you vote? I don't know. Ask me if it's on the ballot. Tell us what you have done as Lieutenant Governor to move the ball. Well, I've been an integral part of the team. I mean, it's a team effort to cut taxes 55 times, create an environment where over 1,061,000 jobs have been created in Florida where 600,000 people have moved to. And if you look at the rest of the country, there's many other states that are not doing nearly as well as Florida is. And it's because we have stayed true to our principles of less taxes and less government and more freedom for the citizens to make decisions for themselves, their businesses, and their families. And when you were a state lawmaker, though, you voted to raise taxes during the recession. Put that in context for us. I actually, as a state lawmaker, as a freshman, I was able to pass a constitutional amendment to cut property taxes yes. for low-income seniors, to make it easier for you to appeal the value of your property tax uh, bill, to create a level playing field when you're appealing the values and take the presumption of correctness away from the property appraiser and create fairness for the property owner. I have, have a whole career of actually delivering accomplishments to lower property taxes. And to the time that you voted to increase taxes under the Crist administration, why did you vote that way? Well, Charlie Crist put us in an impossible situation, and we now know uh, that Charlie Crist was not the best thing for Florida, and the voters have actually uh, had the opportunity to make that decision and send a message. I'm thankful that I was able to work with Governor Scott and undo those, those increase of costs in 2014. If you had a do-over, would you have voted against that tax increase? Under well, Christmas? hindsight is always 2020, Craig. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy that I was able to be a part of undoing and cutting taxes, actually a billion and a half dollars since I uh, took on the job as lieutenant governor. Looking back on the governor's campaign, your campaign with him and the one before in his administration thus far, do you have any regrets? Uh, regrets, I, you know, I wish we would have t cut taxes even more. Uh, although we did, we were able to keep our promise. What about the governor's promise to bring an Arizona-style immigration law to Florida? Do you wish he had not promised that? I don't know. You'd have to ask the governor. But about I'm asking that. you. Do you support that? Do you support an Arizona-style immigration law in Florida? I think the the whole issue of immigration has changed dramatically uh, over the last couple of years. It's now a national security issue. What about the governor's decision to cut public education in the first part of his first term? Is that something you regret? I don't regret that we didn't raise taxes. Right. Because you know, too often in government, you have, to, you have people who believe that it's government's money that it spends. Should we have cut funding for public education when we did at that time? And well, why that much? We had to cut. I mean, we were in the middle of the recession. We were facing multi-billion dollar shortfalls in our state budget. The only alternative was to raise taxes. And we were elected to not raise taxes. So we did what we were elected to do. So tough decision, but cutting public education at that time was the right way to go. Well, is the earth still spinning, Craig? Yes. Uh, you know, people still driving and going to work and everybody's still, you know, surviving, right? Yes. Then it worked. And now we have a 4.9% unemployment rate, the lowest it's been in eight years. We have higher graduation rates for minorities, higher graduation rates, graduation rates for students in Florida, better outcomes, better performance. It's not always about how much you spend. Maybe it's about how you spend it. Lieutenant Governor Carlos Lopez Quintero, thank you for your time. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate it. Coming up in our humor segment, we'll mock the politicians from both parties by working them into the NFL draft. And Marissa Lynn will join me for the play-by-play -play as the picks come in. All right, welcome to the first annual Money Power Politics football draft. Craig Patrick here with Marissa Lynn. Boy, big night tonight. Uh, very big night. This is always the biggest night of the year. You know, teams are looking for players that are going to help them win championships. And here. they're always looking to find that next Andrew Luck. But what we're finding and hearing now from the White House is that he may not be the gold standard anymore. Nope, not anymore. It is not Luck. It's James Flacco. And hey, what about it, Marissa? Is Flacco really that good? I think he was thinking about Joe Flacco, but we'll see in a second. The Los Angeles Rams, they're on the clock. They have okay, first pick. It's, yeah, it's showtime. Let's go ahead and kick it off with a blast from Howard Dean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Director Darren, who has the first pick. That's it's Commissioner in. Darren. Oh, Commissioner sorry. Darren. Yeah, Commissioner Darren, take it away. With the first pick in the Money Power Politics draft, the Los Angeles Rams select Hillary Clinton. 
Well, yeah, there you have it. See, if you're Los Angeles, you have to go with one of the front runners, Trump or Clinton, and they chose Clinton. Not a big surprise here. I mean, Bill Clinton, her husband, actually won two national championships, and he swept California, so that was a big win for him. And look at, the, look at this. Look at this. President Obama is all fired up about this pick. I believe that we can win. I believe that we can win. All right, Eagles are on the clock now, and the next pick, it's in. With the second pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select... Donald Trump. So the front runner is off the board. Yeah, and you talk about adversity on and off the field. He has dealt with it, has Trump, and he has shown that he can win those primaries. He's really good at calling audibles. You never know what you're going to get from that guy. Bing, bing, bing. Ah, ah, ah. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, here are the chimes. Next pick is in. With the third pick, the San Diego Chargers select Ted Cruz. Well, that's a very interesting pick there for Cruz. You know, he's a very conservative play caller, doesn't mix it up a lot when it comes to that. How does that fit in the Charger scheme? Well, if he plays well in the Midwest, it works well in the South if he can win the conference title. Well, he's up at the lectern. Let's see what he has to say. I'm a big fan of eating White Castle burgers. I did not know that. I did not know that either, but I think he just inked his first endorsement deal. Let's see what else he has to say. They have become the guy naked barking at the moon in our living room. What? what? Wait, what? Come on, Craig, it's from one of the best sports movies ever, Hoosiers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fourth pick is in. With the fourth pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Chris Christie. Wow, and there he is. Look at that, in the Gilligan shirt, bumping bellies with the skipper. Well, that's owner Jerry Jones, and he knows what he likes. Christie is a hard-charging end who knows how to blitz. You have numb nuts. Your rear end's going to get thrown in jail, idiot. Sit down and shut up. And Craig, with this pick, the Cowboys, they won't need any more bridge players. And with Christie, maybe he can close the bridge. Close the bridge. Rim shot. Thank you. Next pick is in. With the fifth pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Charlie Crist. So thank you all. Wow, Charlie Crist didn't see that coming. Well, he's played quarterback. He lives here in Florida, and Gus Bradley says he's open to changing his scheme. Well, that's interesting because so is Charlie Crist. <laughs> I'm running as a Republican. As an independent, I can't tell you how comfortable I am as a Democrat. With the sixth pick, the Baltimore Ravens select Bill Nelson. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, there you go. Back to, once again, Florida for the sixth overall pick. But is Bill Nelson kind of a reach here? Well, Aussie Newsom played for Alabama, and he loved Forrest Gump when he played for Alabama. And Gump Nelson... Well, he knows how to run. I can tell you, I'm gonna run. I just felt like running. I just felt like running. Oh, and he's speaking. Now, let's go ahead and head over to Nelson right now, thanking his fans and fondly recalling his days in the service. When I was in the military, certainly all the intercourse that I had as a military officer uh, was was the best. Okay, then. What more can you say? I I don't know how you top that. Let's go over to the next pick. With the seventh pick. The San Francisco 49ers feel the burn and pick Bernie Sanders. Yeah, and there it is. Sanders, very popular with the young fans, a very popular pick that part of the country. Except he can't shoot a basketball very well. Let's take a look at his work at the Combine. I used to be a little bit better. Oh, we can't let him end on that. We, we got to give him one more shot. Yeah, I'd give him one more shot at least. You ready? You're ready. Yeah, I think he could be a bit of a bust, at least on the field. Yeah, let's go to Commissioner Darren with the next pick. With the eighth. <laughs> there we go. We got Darren. We got Darren. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 let's try that one more time, Darren. Try to say that with a straight face. With the eighth pick, the Cleveland Browns select Boris Yeltsin. Yeah, there you go. And that's kind of a kind of a random uh, out there kind of pick. Not surprising giving the Browns draft history in recent years, though. They're going to start calling him Boris football, I heard. But I think that he's got some off the field concerns. I know he's been known to drink, maybe party a little too much. Yeah, that's a big concern for teams. And, you know, those off the field concerns, they're very, very real. Plus, on top of that, I think I think he's dead. <laughs> Next pick. With the ninth pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Jeb Bush.
Yeah, Marissa, I didn't really see that one coming. Let's see a show of hands out there. Who think that was a kind of a weird pick? Yeah, yeah that, that's what I thought. Especially after somebody hacked his Twitter page and posted this unflattering picture. It looks as if he may have been smoking something. 40 years ago, I smoked marijuana. If you look at the game footage, though, especially if you compare it to his brother, I think that he looks pretty good. Take a look. Every child can learn. Children do learn. A smart energy policy. We need an energy bill that encourages consumption. I visited over 400 Florida schools. I hear there's rumors on the... Uh, Internets. Well, that'll fire up the crowd. Let's see how Jeb brings this one home. Please clap. <laughs> All right, then that's our first annual Money Power Politics football draft. Marissa, thank you so much for the play-by-play -play and the color commentary. Yeah. And we have to thank director. Let's call him Commissioner Darren, Darren for a day. That's right. We have a lot more on our YouTube channel. If you can look for Craig Patrick's Money Power and Politics on YouTube. We will leave you, Hugh Parkinson, one more time with the insiders. Another clip, winter is trumping. No deals, no deals. We don't make deals, not with anybody. We don't make deals. You mistake me, my lord. That was a command. No, 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 excuse me, just so you understand. We need people that know what they're doing. We don't need babies. Are you refusing to obey my order? Yeah, uh, by the way, I never, you, I think you could say that, yeah.